Hello, I'm Mark Pikert, Editor-in-Chief of The Gay Goods, and you are tuned in to today's installment of The Gay Goodies. Now, Tina Turner once claimed that she didn't like the rain against her window, but I think she would have changed her tune if it was this rain, my next guest, tapping on her bedroom window to be let in. I know I would. Rain. Hey. <laughs> hey. New Falcon Naked Sword exclusive. Your first scene hasn't even dropped yet. No. Everyone is talking about you. <laughs> yeah. So how does it feel to get into get into studio porn, not just with like a say uncle situation, but starting off as a new exclusive for Falcon Naked Sword? It's exciting. Um, I was really shocked that they even asked. I was like, I just did it just, you know, just to like give it a try. And then like immediately after I filmed, they were like, yeah, we want to make you an exclusive. I was like, damn. I was like, is this like, I had a like, consult with like my other friends who do porn it was like yo bitch do it <laughs> <laughs> so how did you so you're very popular on the fan platforms so how did you first start doing that stuff um so I initially last year I was just doing like so I was just doing it here and there I wouldn't even I wasn't even trying like um I I just was doing like solo stuff and then the beginning of this year, um, I started collabing with people, and like when I started collabing, like people started noticing me. I think I also would be like on other like um, social media platforms, and like porn stars would like drop in. They would see like my avatar, and they like follow me from like um, what is it called Clubhouse? I'll be on Clubhouse. That's how Boomer. Oh, Banks, like yeah, Boomer Banks saw me on there. He followed me from there, and then like that's how other people saw me because I was talking to Boomer Banks all the time. So you you are a very 2021 porn star being discovered <laughs> from Clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Boomer Bank saw me on Clubhouse and I started talking with him and then I think Cole Connor saw my interaction with Boomer Banks and Cole Connor reached out to film with me and from there it's just been going up. So what what were your solo scenes that you started off with? Was it just you in bed jerking off? Were you doing anything yeah, just, special? I would do like special DMs for people, but I didn't like I barely I was like barely even like trying. I was like wasn't even making any like really any money off of, off of it back then. So I was just I was just like whatever. I get a, like a few hundred bucks here and there, and then I started collabing, and then that's when it's like a few thousand, like a couple thousand dollars. I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just, you know, I just kept going. I was like, all right, well, let me, let me, why not? I'm, I'm in there. I'm just, I'm here. So, I mean, was that, did that feel validating to have that number of porn stars doing studio work, reaching out to you, excited to work with you? Did it feel like you were um, on the right track? I did feel like I was on the right track. Uh, I don't know if it felt like, I, it does actually give me like a sense of like validation because like, I'm like, sometimes I get like a little depression. You know, everybody does where they're a little depression. They don't think they're enough. And like, and like, it, like, it, it like helps to like hear like other porn stars be like, yeah, dude, you're gonna be like great. And like, like they really uplift me. So I try to stay away from all the drama, the caddy stuff. So <laughs> uh -huh. it's all good. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> where did where did you get rain what prompted that name for actually your porn so <laughs> so my real name is henry so like the king and like so we were going i was sitting down with like the um like ceo for falcon and everything we were like going over a list of names and then rain was one of them and i was like okay we can let's give it a try for a little bit and i was like i like it. and it like grew on me so i like it I like it. And when the musical about the uh, the wives of Henry VIII comes to Broadway, you need to show <laughs> up for the for the content that you'll get for Instagram and Twitter. Oh, Lord. Yes, I got to show up. To, I need to go to New York and like get some content, actually. Yes. Come, I mean, I live uh, I live near the airport. So uh, take a lift. Uh, get me Shake Shack from LaGuardia. Drop it okay. off and then I'll take you around. I'll show you the sights. <laughs> Please, please. It's been, I haven't been to New York like none this year. But last year I was there like every other month. <laughs> During the pandemic? 
Yeah, it was bad. I was just out. I was out and about. Pandemic. I traveled the most during the pandemic. What? <laughs> what could you possibly want to do in New York during the pandemic? Nothing was open. We were all just sitting yeah, on our dude. asses. Baby, it was open. <laughs> you said to know where to go. <laughs> well, not all of New York City, just some of the major tunnels were open for yeah. business. Always open, baby. Always open. <laughs> <laughs> the glory so, are always yeah. open. <laughs> now, I know that's not true, because some of those porn stores close about 2 a.m. on a weeknight. Oh, yeah. I remember that from... Uh, when I would go out to gay bars. <laughs> yeah. But. but you're doing you're doing fan content, you're traveling, you're doing your thing, and then you show up and you are not only doing a scene for Falcon Naked Sword, you are doing a big scene in a big movie directed by Tony DeMarco. Was yes. it did Tony do get a room too? He did. He did go and get a yeah. room too as well. So what was your first day on set like? Oh my god, it was crazy. Porn is like, like it's like so. I would not have thought it like went like this. Like it's so hard. It's not easy. Like you would think, oh, just get hard and have sex, and it's just like no. Get hard, have sex, open up the camera needs to see. All right, let's reshoot it. Let's reshoot. Let's reshoot. It's so much. It's like it's very hard work, and I understand like. It is. It's not a joke. It's like it's just, this is real. <laughs> Plus, I mean, get hard, have sex, do it, repeat. But you also have to find time for photos. Yes, yeah, standing so, around <laughs> naked with a heart on for photos, which to me is the most mortifying possibility that I could possibly it's, think of. It's so hard. The photos is like one of the hardest parts because, like, if they don't, if we don't do the photos at the beginning, like. Five hours in, like it's so hard to like maintain a, re a re erection. Like I'm like, damn, I wish we would have did these photos earlier. Like, but you know, I still we still get it done. <laughs> well, and also, I mean, the, some people do it, and yours turned out really nicely. I will say, your photos look great. But there's always, I just I look at the photos and I think, how much work went into maintaining the sexy face, and keeping the body tight, and hitting your light, and keeping your dick hard and up it is it's pretty hard and um <laughs> the photo shoot that i did it was the um that everyone sees what i did with um trent do um trent and ducati and he's like the photographer he is like amazing he's like he tells you everything he's yeah. like all right that's hell fix your face relax move open up flex don't breathe. It's like he's like all over. Like they, the pictures come out great. So I'm, I'm listening. I listen to everything he says. So yeah. Was it? Did it feel strange to be filming porn in front of? And there aren't as many people on a set as you think that there are, but there are certainly more than doing an OnlyFans collab. Uh yeah, but you know, I have no. I don't get shy when it comes to like having sets in front of people because. <laughs> been there done that a few times yeah well then what does get you shy um i don't know i don't really get shy oh i don't know i'm shy when karaoke. i meet new people when i when i meet new people not yet. karaoke is not <laughs> for me I, I go out i go out there and sing off key in front of everybody i do not care <laughs> I mean, that's really what you were doing. That is, that's really what you were doing in New York during the pandemic. The karaoke bars had a yeah. good discount and they were pretty empty. So you just show up and spend the entire night singing alone. <laughs> yeah, I was singing karaoke the whole time. <laughs> I wasn't alone, though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you signed as an exclusive shortly after filming your first scene, which is incredible. And then the press release goes out. Did you see what was the immediate reaction? I assume everyone started reaching out to you on social media. I yeah. thirstily did. <laughs> I got like six thousand follows in like two days. I was like, oh my god! Like, yeah, it was a, it was a lot. It was like so much, and it was all like, a lot of like positive feedback, which I really appreciate. It really like 
helps to like boost my self esteem a little bit because sometimes I really be like so self self conscious about like how I look and like what people are gonna think and like it was very positive feedback. I really enjoyed it and like it was, it was I was just everywhere and like people, all my friends was like messaging me it was like sending me my articles and like I was like yeah <laughs> it's like I got my friends in porn star now I'm like oh, I don't know about a star but I'm I'm in porn. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the one scene in get a room Two. have you filmed other stuff already are you about to film like what's the schedule yes i filmed i said i filmed the scene with um devin franco um for naked sword i don't know when that's coming out uh, i don't know when anything comes out so i'm just gonna throw that out there no one does um, <laughs> uh, I filmed with um, Bo Butler. Um, we have another scene coming up together um, for uh, I think it's Hot House, uh, and then I have two scenes coming up for um, Falcon that I'm gonna be doing. But I don't know who I'm filming with yet. So yeah, I've nice. got I've got a busy little schedule going on there with the with the porn. <laughs> And are you still doing stuff on OnlyFans or are you using the contract as an, as an excuse to say, I get to break, I get to take a break? Yeah. Um, no, I still film um, because like, you know, I'm not, it's like another, I, I believe in having multiple sources of income. So mm -hmm. I, I'm going to get my money from my content. I'm going to get it from Falcon. I'm going to get it from my regular job. Um, Stop. I'm like, my money is like everywhere. Stocks, crypto. I like, I believe in investing. Like, I don't play. I'm like so serious about like securing a, a, a safe, um, stable future for myself. So by any means. So what were you, what, what was your career trajectory before, uh, you started letting people see you naked and they insisted <laughs> that you join porn? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't I thought about doing porn actually, even when I was a little tweak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Man, I'm gonna do porn." Then, like, and then it happened. I was like, "Oh wow!" Spoken into existence. Um, you know what? That's. I mean, Oprah taught us that in the late '90s. She taught us how to do that. Yeah, I I believe in. It. I'm a full believer, in, a firm believer in like speaking like the life I want into it in existence. So, I'm gonna be a billionaire. It's happening. Um, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but it's going to happen. Um, crypto. You're probably already a billionaire in crypto. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> just waiting. Just staying patient. I'm waiting for the next Bitcoin to happen. <laughs> um, no, uh, for, I can't go into details what I do for work, but I decided like, like a few years ago, I was like, this, it's not for me. I'm going to get out. I have enough money saved up to like not work for like a while. And I'm just going to find something I'm very passionate about and go from there. Because I'm still young. I'm only 29. So, yeah. I mean, that's the dream. Work for a while, save up some money, and then take some time off. Yeah. It's needed. My mental health is it's cracking under this pressure. <laughs> Well, and the fame now, the fame. You don't want to be a Lindsay Lohan. Uh, <laughs> you want to be Lindsay. a Hillary Duff. Yeah, a Hillary Duff, yes. <laughs> drama, drama, drama. Oh, no, never, never with me. I mean, I, I get a, like an ounce of drama. And I'm like, blah, delete. I, <laughs> I have spent the last 20 years of my life looking at everyone going, are you drama? Because I don't want it. Right. I do not want it. I don't play it. None of that. I no. It just makes me so tired. That's why I sleep so well. I'm surrounded <laughs> by drama, and it just knocks me out at the end of every day. I'm gonna send you some um, some sage and um, Palo Santo, so you can like cleanse that negative energy out of your house. <laughs> do you know the only time I've ever saged my apartment? It was. Uh, an ex-boyfriend did it. I had just moved in uh, like two months before I met him. Mm -hmm. And he came over with his little brush and he did the whole thing, or his yeah. stick, and he did the whole thing. And he turned out to be the worst boyfriend I've ever had, the most gaslighting, uh, sociopathic. Oof. And I was like, 
I I should have done it myself. I can't let the demon <laughs> exercise the house. He's not gonna remove. He's not gonna re remove himself. No. Uh, you now I know. It. Don't ever let someone else do it. No, you got to do it. Yeah, I did it. And it I exercised my my side of the house. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's, like, it's oh. all about fresh starts. Yeah. Very fresh. All all those Sagittarius eclipses are about to end from 2020. <laughs> What's your sign? Coming up. Uh, Aries. Oh, I love Aries. I'm a Virgo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, there's yeah. a lot there. A lot of perfection. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you, you, can, you stick around and be perfect, and I'm just going to blaze on through. Okay. <laughs> and get a lot of shit done. Kind oh. of okay. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, but I wanted to ask because people love tattoos. Uh, what is what do you have on your chest? Um, oh my god, I have so much. Um, so I said, my is it all one or is it no, just a bunch a, of different? A bunch of different. I had, my first tattoo was like faith, hope, love. It was across my chest, and I was like, oh, you know. So true story. My tattoos stem from like self hate, depression, and stuff because like. I was so I hated my body so much that I just wanted to cover it up, and like, um, like I was like, oh, I just get tattoos, and like nobody would like they'll be so focused on the tattoos they won't like really see me, and then yeah, so but I started just getting tattoos and like covering up my body, and then I got in shape, and it was like plus <laughs> now I'm in shape with tattoos, <laughs> 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 and thus porn. Yeah. Uh, or, <laughs> what was? Why were you unhappy with your body? Were you just skinny? I mean, as a skinny person myself who has struggled with body issues. Yeah, uh, I don't know. There's just like so much like self hate in there. I, I hated being skinny. Um, I was going through a lot of depression because like when I was younger, I was going through. Uh, me and my mom, we um we stopped talking for a while because like she was like dealing with the whole me being gay thing. Um. Yeah, so that was just his own situation right there. And yeah. then think, we eventually got our, our, our relationship back together. And then um, when I moved back to America, uh, I started working out. I started going to the gym because I was, I was back in Florida. I was going to the gym, started getting back in shape. And I was like, or got in shape. And I was like, happy where I was at. So I was like, looking good. <laughs> And it only makes the tattoos look better. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I got a ton of Slightly stuff. stretched. It's like, no, they still look the same. They all, like, I got bigger. My tattoos, like, look the same. Like, nothing's, nothing's different. Nicely done. Yeah. <laughs> where were you, where were you living outside of the country? I used to live in Japan. Oh, my God. That's incredible. Yeah. I lived in Japan for a couple of years and then I came back to America. What did they do with a six foot two black man in Japan? I'll tell you what they do. They take pictures and ask if I'm a basketball player. <laughs> 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 do you play basketball? No, I don't play basketball at all, actually. Uh, I swim. I actually used to coach a swim team in um, California. So, like, um, I, I, yeah, I'm a swimmer. Like, that's that's my sport. That's what I do. So. Oh wow. Yeah. So, are you excited about the Olympics? Is this your time? I am. I am. I always pay attention to the swimming. Like that is like, that is like my heart right there. Um, I forgot her name. The um black swimmer who like um qualified for like the uh, Olympics. I was like so I almost shed a tear like watching it. I almost cried. Like, I was so happy for her. Like because you don't really like people. Oh, you black, you can't swim. I'm like no. <laughs> I can actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was a lifeguard for like four years, like um when I was younger. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Florida. <laughs> Yo. And you're talking to me, you're talking to me about heat right now. You grew up in Florida. Come on. I love the heat. I love the heat. So it's a dry I, heat there. I hate dry heat. So I was in Vegas, um, <laughs> 
last weekend. It was like 115 degrees. I was like, not okay. People are like, you want to come outside? No, I don't want to die. <laughs> wow. No, no one should have been making you. Those are not your friends. The They're people who try to make you go outside are not your friends. Right, at all. You like that sticky fl I mean, I grew up on the Gulf of Mexico in Texas. I grew up right outside of Galveston. Okay, see. You so know. I know all about that humidity. I love it. It keeps your skin uh, young. That's why people always say, how old are you? I'm like, how do I look? 25, thanks. thanks. You're right. I am 25. <laughs> Thank you. You're very good at guessing. <laughs> Thank you. You got to hit, hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you also? What else do you have planned? Are you uh, gonna do any of the uh, the go go shows that are starting to happen again? Any of the expos that are starting to pop up? Oh my god! I used to be a um, go go dancer back in the day. I used to do a lot of stuff. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, Cece Larue uh, hit me up to like go go, and I was like, oh girl, I cannot dance. <laughs> so we'll see. so what was your what was your go go? Was, was it just the monkey? Like I was just this in a there. box? I don't know. I was just be out there like moving a little bit, trying to be sexy, make my little couple hundred and go home. Yeah. Go home to go to See, work. <laughs> what what were your what were your underwear? What were you wearing? Oh my god, I was a mess. I have some pictures. I'm gonna have to post them online because I have pictures. <laughs> it was a hot mess. Jesus. Lord, get this, plate, this? plate of food. <laughs> so this was before you started working yes, out? Yes, yes. I was so skinny. So just a dick as big as your arm. <laughs> and you're That's Andrew Christian. That the money. That's the money maker. <laughs> That's all people care about. A big dick. You don't even got to be pretty. Oh, you got a big dick, though. <laughs> I just, now I have this mental picture of you with your dick coiled up like a snake <laughs> in the pouch of Andrew Christian briefs. Oh and no God. one is looking above your waist and you're just filing your nails while you're kind of moving to the beat. Moving. Showing them a dick. Showing them the dick. That's it. You know what? It's making you that money, honey. It surely is. It surely <laughs> is. And I'm not even <laughs> mad. I was talking to my mom the other day. She don't know what I do for work. <laughs> But I was hinting. I was like, I was like, oh, it was like people make a lot of money on OnlyFans. I was like, if you see me on there, what you gonna tell people? And she was like, to mind their business. I was like, exactly. Yep, that's right. <laughs> exactly, mind your business, because. <laughs> uh, well, selfishly, I am delighted that you were in porn now because you're fantastic and very funny. And the more very cool people that I get to do stuff like this with, the happier I am. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I'm so delighted that you took the time today to come get into your car where your phone overheated and keep talking to me. <laughs> yes, of course. I, there's no problem. Like, I don't mind. And I love that you're classy enough to have kept your shirt on the entire time. I wanted to take it off, but I was like, mm, do I want to be that kind of girl? I mean, <laughs> it's happened before. If you want to take it off at the end and let everyone see Listen, the majesty. They better click on that on the little links down there. <laughs> 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 and support a local business. <laughs> <laughs> That's you heard him, guys. If you're looking to support a local black owned business, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's onlyfans.com slash rain underscore forever. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Tune in next week for the latest installment.